My name is Matty Rowe, not Mathurin. The English say Mathurin, but it's a French name, as I think I mentioned to you. So it's Matty Rowe. Um, and of course, just being to France and having gone to visit the Matty Rowe Theatre, Rue de Matty Rowe, and the Museum of the Matty Rowe. Um, it makes me much more proud <laughs> to use the French pronunciation. I had a childhood in St. Lucia, which you might know is one of the most beautiful places in the world. Um, I, so my early years were spent there. My father, first of all, uh, who was in the Merchant Navy, um, um, migrated to England because this is where um, the headquarters was of, 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 of the various ship maritime that he worked with. Um, and subsequently, um, my mother joined him. And of course, myself and my younger brother was left uh, with my older brother and his family um, until such time that my mother and father was able to, to, to have us join them in London. Wow, what a difference. What a difference. For the first time I saw joined up houses, what we call, what we call now terraced houses. Um, in the Caribbean, I never saw that. Each and every person had their own, be it, a, be it their own shack. It was their own house. Um, uh, you know, you never, you never had joined up houses like that. We spent a lot of time uh, in the city of London, you know, going to the stock, stock Exchange, the Bank of England, Mansion House. You know, I mean, these, these places mean a lot to me. For the first time, I saw myself as being different from the masses. I didn't, obviously, these terms didn't didn't mean anything to me because I was a child. But I now realize that I was a minority for the first time, whereas in the Caribbean, in St. Lucia, I was part of the majority. I came to the Southwest immediately from um, university and, and, and college. I must say to you, I had never previously heard about Gloucester. Apart from the nursery rhyme, Dr. Foster went to Gloucester, to, yeah? Apart from that, I hadn't heard. Um, but I was applying for jobs. So I saw this job and I thought, well, I can do that because I've already been doing some of it. Let me, advert let me apply. And lo and behold, <laughs> they were offering me the job. Would I accept it? I said, I'll take it. And that's how I came to be in the Southwest. So I worked at the Race Equality Council as what was then the Assistant Race Equality Officer. Then I was offered a senior job in London. Uh, I worked in London for 11 years uh, following that, being home again. Um, I got married in the meantime. My wife didn't like London as much as I did. So she chose to come to live in Gloucester. I had applied for a job um, while I was still in London for a post in Bristol uh, with a national children's charity, the Children's Society. Uh, and I got off that job. So it was an opportunity um, to rejoin my family in, in, in who had already moved to Gloucester. Um, and to rekindle uh, ties with Gloucester, and I've been here ever since. I was instrumental in establishing the Race Equality Forum for the City Council, which is a body that sees the community representatives working with councillors and council officers. When I first came to the Southwest, Southwest was different from London. I saw in Gloucester most of the established black communities having their own homes. 
not having to live in flats or rent flats above somebody else's flat, you know, which is what we had in London. It impressed me to be able to go out into the country. I mean, in London, I used to have to go to Epping Forest, drive, <laughs> get on the train and go out to Epping Forest before I, I saw trees and, and, you know. And of course, I, I suppose I was in my element because I was able to do things, initiate things in Gloucester. And when you're initiating, and people are looking forward to you being successful in what you're initiating, it gives you a buzz. Well, what I do at the moment is um, gently um, working myself into full retirement. Um, in a sense, I suppose I could say I'm semi-retired. Throughout my life, I've been involved to a certain extent of the community um, I continue to um, be engaged in, in local things, uh, some national things and some regional things, of which um, SEMVO, which is the um, Council for Ethnic Minority Voluntary Organizations, um, I've been involved with in, in the setting up of that organization. Um, I've been involved in its regional uh, structure the Southwest for some time, and I've been, and I still do, chair its regional advisory council. Um, and that is a body that seeks to uh, assist um, BME, what is loosely described as black and minority ethnic people. And my wife and I, we love traveling. My wife, both of us, would put down the tools and travel. And in the last two years or so, we've traveled a lot um, to Africa, to Europe, to the Caribbean. Um, we're both open. I'm open certainly to go out to China later on this year. My wife has been to China. I've never been, but she wants to go again. Um, so I just hope that God gives us the health, um, strength, and resources to be able to do that. Because, um, you know, I love meeting people. I love seeing how people function. I love listening to people sitting down and rap, like they say in the West Indies, let's have a rap. Let's talk. You know what I mean? I, I love it. I love doing it. I love getting angry, excited, and what have you. And at the end of it, you know, shaking hands and saying, that was good. I, I, I'll do that. I love it. You know, it, it really does give me, the, what they say, the fire in the belly. Yeah. And I'll do it for Sembo. I'll do it for the EMF. I'll do it for any other organization that I'm involved in because I can't be halfway. It's got to be all the way or I bow out. <laughs>